Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder to some first impressions on the French naval tech tree, the blue water one. And uh, I start with the bottom of the pack, the Lorraine and the Paris, the two rank five battleships, or shall I say, trash dreadnoughts. They're not really good. They have severe problems um, and they're not really good at dealing with anything. That's the TLDR. And this is where I come to the Surprise, surprise, Emile Bertin. Rank 4, battle rating 5.3, and it is a nice light cruiser. I like it. And maybe I'm a little bit biased because they remind me of the German cruisers, but in an improved fashion. So imagine the Leipzig, the Nuremberg, or the Köln, maybe even the Karlsruhe, right? And uh, make them French. So you just turn them around 180 degrees. You have nine nice 152 millimeter guns in three triple turrets with the advantage on the French one that you have two super firing ones in the front and one in the back. The reload with eight seconds is okay but the ready rack which grants you this eight second reload holds only 30 rounds per gun. And yeah, if you're in a cap and you reload, if you have breaks between engagements, sure, you can keep it up. But after you used the ready rack, you get down to a rate of fire of 5.6 rounds per minute. That's roughly 11 seconds of reload. And uh, that hurts because you're at the end of the day still firing 152 millimeter guns or six inch guns. The secondaries are 90mm guns, only two, not really worth talking about. Uh, or, you know, you have some overall four 90mm that are not worth it. The 37s are single shots or they're trash, but you have a lot of 13.2mm heavy machine guns and they're not really a good protection. But then you have also six 550mm torpedoes and I use them on purpose without the torpedo mode because then they are faster and they still have some range. Uh, armor? Uh, what armor? It is basically a destroyer, I'm not kidding. Uh, the ammo racks for both the rear and the front magazine are at the waterline. Uh, they have a little bit of uh, spaced armor and they're all around only 30 millimeters. So any destroyer with any sort of base use HE or sap round can detonate you if they uh, aim for your ammo rack, your main magazine. The turrets have no armor whatsoever. Everybody can knock out this uh, ship's main armament from any angle and at any distance with basically every gun except maybe 40 millimeters HE, I don't know. Uh, but there is just no armor, right? Uh, overall, the ship is fast, 74 kilometers per hour, and it's very agile. It behaves more like a destroyer rather than uh, a, a light cruiser in the sense of a Helena, right? Or a heavy cruiser. And I really like this ship. Have I mentioned this? Uh, now let's talk about the ammunition because that is simply something else. Uh, because you have three ammo types. You have the normal HE, which is trash because it's HE, 5.2 kilograms of TNT. Then you have the uh, SEP round with 139 millimeters of penetration. That is less than the high pen SEP from the Moffat. Uh, but there you have a mighty 3.7 kilograms of TNT yield. That hurts destroyers a lot. And if you have something with armor, you can go to the 152mm AP CBC round, which has 313 millimeters of penetration and uh, has just less than 900 grams of TNT. So it is really good that you can choose whatever the meta dictates, whatever enemy you're facing and it really works. Those shells deal damage, they deal nice damage, you can count on it, and this is so much more relaxing than playing the damn battleships that just don't work. Hopefully Gachin addresses this issue at some point, but I just, I, I, I just couldn't play them anymore. I had no fun whatever. I, I tried it for a couple of hours and I was just slapped in the face over and over by the snail. But the Emile Bertin was just a fresh breeze, right? 
I absolutely like it. Furthermore, I can absolutely not wait to get my hands on the Corbea. Maybe somebody at Gaijin uh, has a good day and shoots me a test drive for the Corbea as well, because that's the heavy cruiser, right? And it has eight eight inch guns or four twin 203 millimeter uh, guns and uh, they have the same reload of air uh, of 12 seconds i think right uh, and i hope that this ship it makes really good in combination uh with the mil bertin as a lineup uh maybe hop in even the primoche or the dugon trois you know uh, maybe even consider the Jean d'Arc. I have to try them out, right, before I say anything more. But the Emile Bertin gives me hope that the tech tree is not just feeding pearls to the pigs, right? And uh, so I have hopes that when there are decent players who know how to position, who know how to ambush enemies, who know the uh, ammo selection, who know how to aim, uh, you know, not relying on armor and knowing certain tricks like waiting with the spawn up, up until the point that all the bots have acquired their targets and are shooting somebody else, right? Then you can have a nice time in the ship. It is maneuverable and fast. It has all tools available, even though in some cases as a rudimentary thing you know there are things that this ship is missing it doesn't have proximity fuses for the anti-aircraft guns it doesn't have really good AA. it doesn't have armor uh, it doesn't have depth charges it doesn't have all the torpedoes you have only six torpedoes but as you could see it's enough for one good ambush or you know if you have uh, a safe line of fire then it's good enough right and this good enough and then you being the factor making the ship work, that is nice. If there is some base capability, right? If there is something that you can play with, then I like it. And this is what I kind of missed with the Aigle and the Dugon Trois. Although I have to give the Dugon Trois another go. I've received certain comments. Maybe the ship has been improved a little bit here and there. Maybe I was a bit too harsh or impatient with it. You know, giving it the benefit of the doubt. But the, ba ba but the two battleships, the Paris and the Laurent, they're just trash. They're absolutely not worth it. And uh, this is where I would come to the conclusion that you should wait with purchasing yourself into the close beta. Because aside from the two 5.3 ships, which are okay and nice and maybe cool for veteran players, there is nothing overpowered currently in the tech tree. There is nothing that just produces absurd amount of silver lines or uh, gives you a feel of superiority. The entire tech tree suffers from the problem that there are no patrol boats that you can cap the inner caps with, right? Look at the current scenario. A, B and C are uh, captured by the enemy and we have to fight really hard to again, again get a foothold on them. And uh, that is difficult if you have such a time disadvantage getting there right i mean i have uh, not that many problems dealing with the enemy and also the lack of armor means that a lot of armor piercing or sap rounds just overpen the ship right and uh, a lot of people miss the detailed aim the precise aim again here a little hint for my ammunition guide my aiming guide etc etc so it's really really important that you know what you're doing if you're considering buying yourself into the beta in the first place but currently the tech tree is not worth it and some mechanics are also bugged look i launched my uh, my uh float plane and i want to cap a hey, but there is the thing where it pitches up right and wants to go to space but i just couldn't recover from this dive because it stalled so gadget has to rework this as well i cannot report everything at all time otherwise i'd be busy reporting all day long my job is playing the game and uh, i hope you get a sense what the 
Emile Bertin is capable of and maybe that's just the ship that you were waiting for. It's a beautiful ship. I like it. And that's it for today. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Please give this video a like. Give it a subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other on the battlefields, in the skies and on the waves of War Thunder.